All right, time for another edition of Sharper Square. I had a very good week, four and one on my Blazing Five. So let's get to the games I like a lot. Raiders and Titans are both struggling. Titans, though, at home getting points. I think I have a coaching advantage. Listen, they're not terribly explosive, but you don't have to be with the Raiders back end. I'm taking what I think is a better staff, more continuity on the staff. They're at home. They're getting points. I would take the Titans here, sharper square. It's completely neutral. No joke. There is 50% of the money on the Raiders, 50% of the money on the Titans. Um, I think in the end, I would be with you. It's interesting to me. How many times have you said to me, you don't want to bet games, you don't want to watch? This is a corner TV game. And what that means is when you're at the sports book and the bookmakers know they have to put every game on television, this is the game they put on in the corner. It's going to have the fewest amount of bets. It's going to have the least amount of interest. It's going to have the least amount of passion. Like people kind of don't have a strong opinion on it. I think the Raiders are kind of injured. I think Derek Carr can't seem to make decisions in this new offense. I agree with you about the coaching advantage. I am a huge Mike Rabel fan. Um, But from a sharp square perspective, there is zero sort of opinion to be had. You're kind of taking the home underdog, which is always the safe thing to do. You're taking a home underdog with a better coach. But right now, this Titans team is not a very dynamic team. So for me personally, it would be a pass. I'm going to take the Commanders plus six and a half at home against the Eagles. Eagles short week. The world's telling them how great they are. And the truth is the Commanders did beat a Jacksonville team, which I think is actually pretty spunky. Carson Wentz gets a lot of criticism, but it's funny. The Colts can't move the chains since he left. Maybe he wasn't the problem. I'm going to take in a division rivalry, six and a half points every day. Veteran coach, sharper square. The, the difference between how you sounded in the last bet and how you sound in this bet, it's like it's two different people. Of course, this is the sharp play. You said all the key phrases. You're getting a division dog at a big number. You're getting a quarterback who probably will burn you at some point, but he's also a quarterback who has kept his team in games and in cover positions. And I agree with you about the Jags. I think they're going to win the AFC South. Uh, I bet him before the season began at eight to one to win the AFC South. Uh, And you've seen the Eagles team, that Kirk Cousins game, he gave it to the Eagles. The Eagles were giving Kirk Cousins every opportunity to stay in that game. I would be a little worried about the Eagles defense right now. And as you said, it's a classic buy low, sell high, right? You're getting the Eagles coming off that prime time game, coming off a huge win. They are the team that everyone thinks is going to be dominant in the NFC right now. And the commanders, you know, they'd have lost. They just lost. So, so it's the right spot. Like the Jags plus seven against the Chargers. First of all, I think they can move the ball. I talked to Greg Cosell today. He said he already sees improvements from Urban to Doug Peterson at quarterback. Uh, The Christian Kirk dynamic is working. Um, Justin Herbert is not practicing at full speed. They're a little banged up. Cole Lindsley, the Pro Bowl center, probably doesn't play. Um, It feels like a lot of points in a game that, I mean, the Chargers, I think, left some offense on the table against the Chiefs and the Raiders. Seven points is too much here. They may go with Chase Daniel because it's a long season and not risk it. I like the Jags plus seven, sharper square. Yeah, this is totally sharp. 90% of the money, no joke, 90% of the money is coming in on the Jaguars. And it's not a small number of tickets either. And The Jags, I thought they could have beaten the Commanders in week one. They gave it away. Then they played great in week two. They did what a lot of us expected them to do. When I came on the show last week, we talked about the Jags at four and a half. Um, They did exactly what we thought they would do. With the Chargers, this is a really big number. I'm surprised at the value you're getting on the Jaguars right now, uh, especially with the Herbert 
scenario. Uh, he's got four essentially broken ribs. That's not easy to play through. So even if he is going to play, he's going to be hobbled. Jaguars are 100% the sharp side here. Yeah, Jags, I thought, were better than the Commanders. Okay, yes. this is an ugly ugly corner game that nobody wants to watch, but I want to bet it. I'm going to take Atlanta plus one and a half at Seattle. Yards per play rushing, Atlanta far superior. Offensive line, Seahawks start two rookie tackles. I'll take the Falcons. Yards passing per game, Mariota is absolutely better when healthy than Geno Smith. Advantage Atlanta. The better team getting points. I think Geno is sort of a one-trick pony. That first opening game, it was fantastic. They looked like a dud against the Niners. I know nobody wants to watch it. Doesn't mean I don't want to bet it. It's one of my favorites. Atlanta plus the point, sharper square. All right, so you've hit on some really key points here. Number one, the Seahawks, the only time to bet them was in week one. We talked about this on the show. I begged you to take the Seahawks plus six against the Broncos. That was going to be the only spot. If you talk to professional betters right now, the way they are power rating teams, the Seahawks and the Bears are the two worst teams in the NFL. The Falcons are a team that they love. And you can see it in the line move here. This game opened at three and a half with the Falcons as three and a half point underdogs on the road at Seattle. The game is now down to one. It is moving fast pretty soon. The Falcons in some spots, it'll be pick. This game will probably have them going off as favorites. It'll be a huge swing. If you want to get the Falcons, get it now. There are some wise guys who will say to you, just bet the Falcons. They're the better team, and they have loved the Falcons this year. The Falcons plus 10 against the Rams last week was a huge, huge wise guy play, and they thought they left a lot of plays in the field. They really love this offense. They love the way it's so predicated on the run. Uh, so you are getting a lot of wise guy activity on the Falcons and the wise guys will be on the Falcons a lot this year. Okay. Another slight underdog, Dallas getting a point at the Giants. Listen, I think Dallas has better personnel. I think the story that Brian Dable is improving um, Daniel Jones is a nice story. I don't think it's a nice team, although I do think they have found in Andrew Thomas, their left tackle for the next decade. That's a great story. They have Kenny Galladay issues now asking, why don't I get the ball? They could easily be 0-2. They're 2-0. and I think I get the better team. Cooper Rush isn't Dak, but he's playing at a level that's reasonably similar to Dak. I'm going to take the points in the Cowboys, sharper square. So it's completely split on this one. Uh, the line has moved in the Cowboys' direction. I can't deny that. But the Giants have been a wise guy team since the before the season began. The wise guys were betting their season win total over. They bet them in game one. They bet them against the Panthers. This is a team that the wise guys have been backing all year long. I think come Monday, you're going to start seeing money come in on the Giants. I personally am going to back the Giants here. It's too short of a home favorite. Uh, in a division game in prime time. I don't agree with you about Cooper Rush at all. I don't think he is Dak level. We talked about this last week, right? I, you, you said you wanted to take the Bengals. And I'm like, listen, the Cowboys at this number, which was plus eight and a half to plus seven, Dak Prescott is not a quarterback who's worth the amount of points against the point spread that he had been given credit for in the way that line moved. But he's still better than Cooper Rush. And this number should not be moving in the direction of the Cowboys. What they do have, statistically and in every other metric, Micah Parsons is just dominant. And I think, if anything, you mentioned Andrew Thomas, like that could be the mitigating factor. He will be the, the left tackle that Micah Parsons is going up against that is better than anybody else he has faced. So yeah. that'll be interesting to me. All right, time for favorites. Listen, I can admit when I'm wrong. San Francisco has such a coaching advantage. I'm going to swallow one and a half against Denver. Hackett is lost. But here's the interesting thing. I'm going to throw my theory at you. Is that there's a sense. Never forget that Kyle Shanahan, many said privately wanted Mac Jones, knowing his athletic limitations. The Niners offense, which is now the Miami offense, is built for Tua and Garoppolo. They're Chris Paul. 
right? They're distributors. They don't need Kobe Bryant. They don't need Michael Jordan running the show. That's Baltimore. Superhuman talent. That's Kansas City. This offense needs a quick distributor to get the ball in the hands of Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Debo Samuel. So whereas Garoppolo and Tua are limited, there's an argument to be made they are ideal for this offense, right? That's why there was some frustration publicly with Trey Lance. He waited too long. He wasn't as accurate. I think San Francisco, I think when they have Garoppolo starting, they're a pain in the arse to face. Major coaching advantage. I think the Niners go into Denver. I'll, I'll swallow the one and a half and beat the Broncos. Sharper square. Yeah, this is a big wise guy game right now. And it's for all those reasons you just said. It's so interesting. In the beginning of the year, people are high on Trey, on Trey Lance. You don't necessarily know what you're going to get, but you're excited about what the ceiling is can be. And you kind of know what Jimmy Garoppolo is, right? You know that he's going to be accurate. He's pro- in in the short game. He's not going to be accurate in the long game. There will probably plays at some point in the game that you need him to make in high pressure situations late in the game that he won't make in games that really, really matter. NFC championship game, Super Bowl. During the regular season, this is a guy you bet on. And everyone now understands this is a team that they can uh, feel comfortable betting on as short road favorites. And Kyle Shannon, through his career, he's better on the road than he is at home. And I think what we've seen with the Broncos, like Nathaniel Hackett, he is a little bit underwater right now. And so he, he was 15 to one to be coach of the year when the season began. He is now at about 100 to 1 to be coach of the year. I think there are coaching issues there. He is learning how to be a head coach in real time. And Russell Wilson has not been the Russell Wilson that that I certainly thought he would be. I thought the Broncos would have a chance to compete in this division. They do not. One more favorite. People paid very little attention in the Miami Baltimore game, which I watched for a second time on Wednesday on the treadmill. Baltimore was the better team. Lamar was the better quarterback. But because of the way it ended in the fireworks show, Tua grabbed the headlines. Lamar Jackson's very good, outplayed Tua for 75% of the game. It was rookie defensive backs that made Tua look like, you know, Joe Montana. Baltimore's a really good football team. The New England Patriots have real limitations. What their weakness is, is what the Ravens' weakness is. You can beat the Ravens over the top. Patriots don't throw over the top. I'm going to swallow the two and a half. I think Baltimore's an elite team, sharper square. This has been a fascinating game. Uh, And we talked a lot about this on the Favorites podcast today. Uh, We do this segment called Sharp Calls, where we'll do the podcast on Tuesday And then on Thursday, we will review the calls that we have gotten from professional bettors who listen to the podcast and will have opinions on the games that we talked about. We talked a lot about the Ravens and the Patriots. On Tuesday, got the most sharp calls about the Ravens and the Patriots for today. Thursday, the Pats plus three is the side everybody is coming in on. I think the problem with the Ravens, and I agree with you, like I, I was concerned, am I letting the second half collapse of the Ravens influence my thinking on this game? Am I letting a uh, recency bias influence how I want to bet on this game? The truth of the matter is, you mentioned the Ravens' defensive back issues. They have a lot of issues. And they also, more importantly, cannot run the ball. And so what you're getting is a team that's going on the road and is now expected to be a road favorite against a team in the Patriots that When Matt Jones plays, they are a serviceable team. When he's healthy, they are a serviceable team. So I think the wise guys are starting to see a little bit of an advantage here at the Patriots plus three. You saw it come down a little bit to two and a half. Uh, I would not be surprised if now that the line is so much higher because it opened a pick. So what we're doing here is playing the numbers, right? And when it gets so high and a home underdog as a field goal gets to that number, a team like the Patriots, the wise guys start buying back. 
Okay, now it's time where you tell me what is your favorite pick that I have not discussed. Um, we have a lot of agreement as I get sharper and sharper with age. I'm like a good cheddar. I just get sharper and sharper with age. Where did I miss? Where did I whiff? Where did I, where was I distracted? What pick do you like? Uh, no one has ever accused you of being cheesy. So that's an interesting analogy you're going for there. Colts plus five and a half against the Kansas City Chiefs. I'll tell you right now. This game opened at seven. The Kansas City Chiefs look like world beaters. You could say Buffalo Bills, number one, Kansas City Chiefs, number two. Indianapolis Colts look like they are really, really terrible. Matt Ryan can't find his way down the field. Frank Reich, again, coaching a team that gets off to very, very bad starts. The Colts got blown out and shut out by the Jaguars. Now we have the Colts in their home opener. They're 0-2. This is the time to respond to the overreaction in a negative way to the Colts. You should have Pittman back at wide receiver. You should have Leonard back at linebacker. A winless home team facing a team with at least one win in the past 20 years covers at a 60% clip. Week three home dogs that have lost at least once against the spread that opened the game under a touchdown underdog, which the Colts did, 64% against the spread. Every trend here looks to the Colts. The market looks to the Colts. We've seen the line drop from six and a half to five and a half. You got to back the Colts. You got to hold your nose. You got to back the Colts. You got to believe that not everything you saw last Sunday is going to be true this Sunday, whether what you saw was good or what you saw was bad. Finally, who do the Sharps like on Tampa Green Bay? I'm just interested in how they view that. Uh, Tampa. Fully on Tampa. And I think that what you're seeing here is you got a Hall of Fame quarterback on one side. You got a Hall of Fame quarterback on the other side. You got good running backs on one side. You got good running backs on the other side. You have inconsistent to unknown to receivers that you can't really trust on both sides. So what's the biggest delta here? The delta is the Buccaneers defense. They know how to pressure Aaron Rodgers. They blitz him up to 40% of the time when they have played him. They have been effective, but most importantly, their defensive backs are just better. And so you're getting a very short home dog. This line is one, one and a half in some places. Uh, so the wise guys are going to pile in on the home team and the short dog with the better defense. Chad Millman, Action Network. I'm off to kind of a toasty start, and I don't mind saying uh, that's not my history. I am usually somebody who starts rough in week one and has to recover. It's a wonky week. I really like the Niners. I really like the Falcons. I really like the Commanders. After that, I can be talked in and out of stuff. Millman, great seeing you. All right, brother. See you later.